Hello folks. I hope that you are just having a great, great, great day today. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Clark Ashton Smith story, this time The Invisible City by Clark Ashton Smith, written in 1932 and published for a, a journal called Wonder Stories, which is the coolest name for a pulp story. Pulp story I think I've ever heard before. Wonder stories. So much fun. Um, so we're going to take a look at the, this short story. Now, he had uh, come up with this idea. It was a little bit of contentious. Um, he had been writing for a pulp called Strange Tales, uh, a lot of short stories for it. The owner of Strange Tales also owned a separate science fiction pulp uh, that was really just for publishing Cowboys in Space, which uh, was a genre in the pulps uh, that Clark Ashton was not a fan of because it's kind of a dumbed-down science fiction -y genre. Um, but the editor had written him and said, how come you haven't submitted articles for this? I, you, I see you submitting articles for our competitors. Um, you know, we would love to, to, to submit some of your stories and, and, and put them out there. Uh, so being uh, fully noted, um, he published, uh, he wrote this short story, The Invisible City, for publication. Um, the editor sent it back with some comments. Clark Anderson Smith, unlike a lot of his compatriots, actually was... He typically took um, editor com uh, contents very, very strongly because he was writing during this time to help support his parents. And so he was incredibly prolific during the height of his career for several years. And this is written during that height. Um, so he's going, to, he's going to do whatever he can to, to get it published. Um, he's not a super fan of this story, according to his letters from other folks. Um, but he still put, uh, put together um, the edits that the editor had sent him. Uh, for for this short story, um, and then he sent it back, and it was rejected a second time, even after he had put all these things into it. And now he's like, "This story, I put way too much work into this short story. It's just not something I'm a fan of. It's not something I think is good." So instead, he just sends it out to Wonder Stories. It's it's accepted upon submission, um, and published in the year early 1932. Uh, so it's a fun story that was written in 31, and published a couple of months later uh, into 32 by Wonder Stories. Um, so we'll take a look at the Invisible City now. The Invisible City. I'm going to be giving it a seven out of ten. I do agree with Clark Ashton Smith that it it's not his best work, but a Clark Ashton Smith story that's not good is still an amazing story because Clark Ashton Smith is such a gifted and talented writer. This is a guy who was a poet, published before uh, he was of age. Uh, you know, uh, as a, as a poet, um, he was known as one of these great rising poets. He's written a lot of prose poetry. Um, as well as pure poetry. Um, he wrote a lot of great stuff. Um, after his parents die, he will turn away from the, the fiction um, and he'll start to turn more towards statues uh, uh, and things like that. So this is a guy who was an incredibly gifted artist. Um, and he just, but, but and so we're catching him during his thing. So a, a, a Clark Ashton's myth story that's not great is still going to be good. <laughs> It's going to be worth your time. Uh, and so The Invisible City is actually a very different story for Clark Ashton Smith. It'll open up with these two people that are the last two members of an expedition to the Gobi Desert uh, to find the lost ruins of a city that's been hinted at, uh, that they found hints of, um, and other members of the expedition have died via various means, and, the la and last night their Mongols um, left them in the Gobi Desert and abandoned them and fled after coming across some creepy ruins and then going off and talking for themselves, uh, which was very unusual because they had been very, very, you know, um, Obligatory. They were the guides. They they had the food. They'd never been pushing back or anything like that, right? Um, they they were very very professional, um, and so to have them leave, you know, overnight and to, and um, but they left them food. They left them uh, their guns. They left them water. They didn't just abandon them completely, and totally. Um, but they but they left the expedition to head on out. So this seems like it's now a doomed expedition. And our two main characters that we're going to be following don't like each other at all now that they've. Been pushed to their limits. Um, they used to be friends because they had this shared vision of going to the Gobi Desert and finding these ruins of this lost city. Uh, but now uh, they're they're starting to come to loggerheads because of their their survival instincts are kicking in and that sort of thing. Uh, so so that's kind of what's happening right now. Um, they're going to come across uh, what is a suspicious area of the city, um, and then some things are going to start to happen uh, very quickly, very in, just a couple pages into the short story. Uh, now, it took me about 45 minutes for me to read it. It's only 17 pages in the large short over collection that I have, 
Uh, but Clark Ashton Smith is a denser writer, so 17 pages of, of a, and, and a larger thing without pictures uh, is, is, was a bit of a larger, longer thing. But it's very well written. Um, as I was reading it, I was kind of reminded by H.P. Lovecraft's uh, The Nameless City, which he wrote earlier in his career, which is set in the Cthulhu Mythos lightly and, uh, and name called by a couple of later Cthulhu Mythos works. Um, and it's also sort of a, an exploration of a city uh, in, 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 the, in Arabia. Another example of a story that was, came to my mind was Robert E. Howard's The Fires of Ashurbanipal, uh, which is also an Arabian exploration uh, in, in a desert. Um, so what I'll do is I'll actually link you in the comments below to both of those, because I've actually reviewed The Name of the City and The Fires of Ash Ashburnipal. Uh, by, by Lovecraft and Howard, respectively, um, which are also, interestingly enough, two of the three triumvirates, because these were the three big, big guys for the Weird Tales pulp magazine, um, and all were, were great friends of each other um, and, and constantly would write to each other. So they were all sort of in the same cadre of writers, writing for the same magazines, uh, having having a lot of the same sort of ideas. They all three wrote in the Cthulhu Mythos. Uh, they all three wrote in the same th same things. Uh, so this is, I think, a good example of another sort of uh, you know uh, desert um, explorations, um, which is which is not uncommon in the pulp genre uh, to have these sort of de desert things. things. Uh, but I can't recall Clark Ashton Smith writing this before or since. Um, it does have a science fiction feel to it, although it's not set in space. It's been set in a Kobe desert. There are some science fictionish things to it. So whereas I think that Clark, Clark um, Robert E. Howard has more of an, an adventure fantasy feel to his, um, and H.P. Lovecraft has more of a horror feel to his. This one has more of a science fiction feel to it, um, which I enjoy. So they each three kind of went to a different genre, if you will, of speculative fiction. <laughs> Um, so you can definitely get a feel for the other two. Uh, so uh, what I'll try to do is I'll definitely link into this collection in the uh, comments below. I'll also see if I can find you this online. Uh, Clark Ashton Smith stuff sometimes will be online, um, depending based on the story. So if I can find it to you for free online, I'll also link you to that in the comments below, as well as to the two stories that I talked about. It's a strong story, very well written, but again, I give it a 7 out of 10. Have you read The Invisible City or heard of it? What did you think of it? Did you agree or disagree with anything that I talked about here in my video? I would love to talk with you and engage with you further about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a whole lot more of these to follow. And finally, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and investing into my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I really, really appreciate it. So thanks again and have a great day.